Microsoft recently released Windows 11 24 H2 and he's wondering why you should upgrade to Windows 11 24 H2 especially if you're running as a virtual desktop or Windows 365 then today I've got the right video for you. In today's video we're going to cover some of the new features and we're going to go over in a bit more detail and then we're going to explain why you should upgrade um, to those new features. If you're new to the channel Welcome, my name is Neil McLaughlin and on this channel I'll cover the latest news about Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Entro ID, Azure and much much more. So let's get to it. So in today's video we're going to talk about 8 Windows 11 24H2 features which will apply to single session and multi session environments as well. All right? So we're going to talk about sudo for Windows, we're going to talk about Rust in the Windows kernel, we're going to talk about the separation of the Copilot application. We're going to talk about some file explorer enhancements that we've got. We're going to talk about the improved Windows search capabilities. We're going to talk about the voice clarity feature, uh, Windows 11 24H2. And then we're going to talk about the removal of some features as well. And then to stop it off, we'll talk about all the, the new kind of hot patching capabilities as well. Okay, so let's get going. Really looking forward to today's video to exploring these new features. The next big change is Microsoft Copilot. Um, so previously um, on Windows 23 um, H2, Copilot was built into the actual image itself, right? Um, and people didn't like that, um, especially in corporate enterprise environments. So and they had to go and actually kind of disable that functionality, which required a few policy settings and sometimes was a bit hit and miss. Um, so in Windows 24 H2, it seems Microsoft had listened um, and the Copilot is actually removed. Okay, so it can be installed as a completely separate app if you want it to, um, but you can also access it um, via the URL. So just going to flick over. So you see normally the Copilot screen was kind of down here, um, but now it's gone. Um, but Microsoft are recommending you can just use the web URL. So if people do want to use Copilot, um, they can just go to copilot.microsoft.com okay, and then use it there. Um, but yeah, the fact that it's been removed um, from from the operating system is a really good thing um, so it'll help with that uh, enterprise use case and keep people's mind at ease and the fact that we don't have copilot running um, on the uh, sort of multi-session or, or single session desktops as well so one of the other features that we've got in windows 11 24 h2 um, is the ability to use something called sudo and um, so what sudo does it basically enables you to run um, Elevated command prompts um, using the same um, command prompt window essentially, right? So uh, previously if I open up a command prompt and I wanted to run something using administrator I'd have to basically open up a second command prompt with the administrator or run as um, Administrator permissions, uh, but what sudo actually enables you to do it basically enables you to run um, the same commands um, without having to uh, be in an elevated command prompt. So it's a much more secure method away um, of running commands um, so you don't have to always work from an elevated command so let's take a quick look and see um, what that looks like and the reason why I mention it is because I think um, a lot of VDI or DAS use cases are for like developers uh, for people who have local admin permissions um, and this is a much more secure way uh, of working so let's take a quick look and see how that works okay so what we're going to do now um, you can see here I'm on my machine so I can just see just to preview you, this is like Windows 24 H2. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna run this command on the right hand side of the screen. So next that hyphen A B. Okay. And it's basically saying, hey, um, this request requires elevation. Um so normally I'd go in there and I basically just right click and say run as administrator. Okay. But that means now on operating um within a uh, window which basically has local administrator rights okay so that's a security risk so what we can now do though is i go to my command prompts i basically say sudo uh, net stat hyphen ab okay so that's going to kick that off going to use uac um, to prompt me okay so i want to click yes and then it runs okay so that command run in with the local admin permissions so now i've gone back to not having information okay if i try to run in the same window sorry i can't do it 
right? So this is the, the new functionality. So uh, much more secure way uh, of working, especially um, in those developer scenarios. Microsoft has started using Rust as a programming language in Windows 24H2 and will continue to see um, more of Rust. So traditionally, Windows is written in the C or C++ um, language and Rust is a much more secure language to use. Okay, so um, a part of 24H2, um, they've started to do little bits of the operating system using Rust and then we'll start to see that um, within more areas of the operating system as well. So the advantages that you're going to get from that is much more secure operating system. Okay, um, so this is kind of the first step um, that have been introduced um, for using the Rust um, language within Windows 24H2. Um, voice clarity has been introduced in 24H2 as well. So um, voice clarity basically removes background noise um, from your Teams calls. Okay, um, so it's been available on the AI version. So if you've got a Copilot Plus PC, um, it will work a lot better. But more recently, Microsoft made it more compatible um, with x86 processors and x64 processors, kind of from Intel and AMD. So um, that feature should be available in Windows 24H2, multi-session and also single session. I've not tested it yet, but from what I've read from the documentation, um, it should be there. So um, that will enable a much better Teams experience, right? Um, because it's more clarity. So they're calling it voice clarity, but what it's actually doing is actually removing um, the background noise. For the full effect of all like all those stuff, um, you basically need to be running a Copilot Plus PC. Um, but as I said, the, the voice clarity feature is one of the features that you don't need um, the Copilot Plus PC for, um, and that should be available um, in the Windows 11 um, multi-session environment, okay? Another new feature which has been introduced to Windows 24H2 is something called hot patching, right? So hot patching has been available for server operating systems for a while now, um, and we've now got it within the Windows 11 24H2 client operating system, okay? So basically, hot patching enables you to install uh, critical patches without having to reboot, right? So why is this important for formal set environments? Well, basically, it means that I don't have to reboot the session hosts, right? Or maybe I don't need to re-image the session host. So um, if, if you think about if you've got an emergency out of bounds patch or something which needs um, distributing, then you'd have to wait until the evening or maybe the weekend um, to deploy those patches because you don't want to interrupt the user sessions. And um, so what this will enable you to do, you can then enable it during the working day without affecting the user sessions on the session host. Now, most people probably won't do that, um, but it's there so if there's a critical out of bounds update that needs to apply that you need to you can't affect the user sessions then that's now available um, using the windows 11 um, auto patch capability right so very very cool feature probably one of those features that you don't think is useful but when you really really need it it's going to be extremely useful to have and um, so you don't have to reboot those session hosts to apply the patches and it means you don't have to do those patching weekends anymore potentially right um, because the, the updates are going to be a lot more incremental, small updates as well. So um, I think we're probably going to get to a stage where rather than like having to wait till Patch Tuesday once a month, um, we're going to drip feed updates throughout the month, um, and then you won't even have to reboot the session host to uh, apply those patches as well. So um, really, really great enhancements there because I know for VDI uh, environments, um, patching is a big problem. Right, um, because people don't want to kind of start restarting hosts um, when people are kind of um, using them um, and they don't want to interrupt any sessions or they don't want to like miss any availability over the weekend and stuff. So um, this is really, really great step forward. We've also got much better search results as well. Um, so basically, Microsoft has done a lot of work with the search engine in Windows 24 HD. Um, so there's a lot of performance enhancements. So they came from two areas mainly. So the firstly is they've introduced optimizations. Basically, they've rewritten the algorithm that Windows Search uses, right? So it's gonna go deeper into the operating system. It's gonna go deeper into your files um, and it will basically re-index um, the files in a much more, much easier method, right? Um, so that's basically gonna massively improve your search results. So again, this is not just applicable to the uh, Copilot Plus uh, with MPUs, um, it's applicable to the x86 and x84 operating systems as well. So um, you should see much more accurate um, search results um, within the improvements in Windows 24H2. And the second performance improvement is actually, um, it should using much less resources, right? Which is great news for multi-session environments. So 
and the new search functionality within windows 24 h2 um should use much less cpu okay uh, because basically microsoft to change the way um that the index service runs and um, well, the way they do the way they do the indexing so um that should result in much reduced um cpu um resources and um, being made on those um multi-session hosts okay another area where microsoft have made great enhancements is around natural language search yeah um so interacting with search should be a lot easier um you can use much more natural language like show me files used last week for example um and then it should respond much better the search functionality previously was a bit kind of hit and miss um but the improvements that they made within 24h2 um should give the users a much better um search experience they've also introduced filtering capabilities um so we can filter by certain file types um or locations um so that should enable much more easier searching as well so as a quick summary um, for the improved features on 24H2, and um, we've got faster search results, right? Um, so these come with improved indexing and better resource management, and we've got much more relevant search results, and we've got better handling of contextual queries, and then we've got improved natural language search as well without needing a NPU, which is great news um, for those multi-session environments. Um, we've also got search filters for better refinement of files, apps, and web content as well. So and that should enable your users to, to filter their search results um, so they can get the more accurate results as well. The, the other big change that has been introduced in Windows 24H2 is the way the context menu is. Okay, so I'm just going to click over to my desktop. Um, so if I click on a file, um, if I do a right click, so you can see here this new menu bar, which looks a lot nicer than the old one. Um, so you can see cut, copy, paste, rename. So a bit easier to use for your users. Um, but we've also got this new functionality to, to compress too. Okay, so we can now out the box compress to like zip file, seven z and tar file. And um, so previously, if you wanted to do that, um, you'd have to use a third party solution um, or install something on on the actual image itself. So and um, that's really good news that Microsoft have introduced that um, as well. So a uh, bit of a bit of a nice cleaner look um, for your users um, and much easier to use for like cut, copy, paste, rename, share. Uh, and as part of Windows 24H2 as well, we're going to be saying goodbye to some features, right? So the features which have been removed um, from Windows 24H2 are Cortana, right? People don't really use that in multi-session environments anyway, so that's all good. Um, tips, which again, we're not really bothered about. But the one I'm going to be sad to be leaving is WordPad. Um, so I use WordPad all the time. Um, so WordPad has been removed um, from Windows 24H2. So um, if you look for it, it won't be there. Okay. So just as an FYI, obviously there are alternatives that you can use. Um, but yeah, WordPad is the main one uh, which has been removed. As I mentioned, also Cortana uh, tips as well. Okay, so that's it for a quick summary of the changes that you're going to get in 24H2 from an end user perspective. But what about the, the IT Pro? So let's have a quick look at the, the Microsoft documentation. I'm not going to go through this in detail. I may do another video on this. Um, but basically in 24H2, um, there's been a few changes. So let me just sorry. Bit, made that a bit bigger for you um so there's been a lot of changes to smb um so if you're security conscious um definitely upgrade to 24h2 and as there'll be some um quite a few smb changes in there okay um we've also got some changes to the local security quality the lsa um so there's that to make that a bit more secure and then we've also got laps as well so if you do use laps inside your um, environment for, for single session desktops um then this is definitely worth I'm looking into because we've got some new um, automatic configuration options for laps as well and um, we've got something called personal data encryption for, for known folders um, so this is like documents desktop and pictures and stuff so a bit against a bit more enhanced security with there we've got support for SHA free and um, we've got app control for business Wi-Fi 7 support which is pretty much irrelevant Bluetooth irrelevant uh, Windows location improvements probably irrelevant as well sudo for Windows um, which we've been through and we've covered um, and then also got some optional updates again remote desktop connection improvements but they're more for um, the MSTSC connections rather than using AVD um, and then just some additional um, stuff within there as well so yeah that's pretty much it so I guess the question is should you upgrade to Windows 24H2 um, I'm a big advocate of always upgrading to the latest and greatest because you get the, the latest features, but more importantly, you get the latest security features, right? Uh, so there's going to be lots of bug fixes in there as well. So um, 
I would say yes, you should upgrade to 24H2. Um, you're going to enhance your security. You're going to give your users a bit of a nicer experience um, through some of the changes that we went through previously. So, um, yeah, so Windows 11 24H2 gets the, the kind of thumbs up for me. Um, and if you do want advice of how you can upgrade to Windows 11 24H2, um, specifically video, um, just please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you. May do another video on that as well, kind of how to migrate from maybe Windows earlier version 11 or maybe even Windows 10 um, onto Windows 11 24H2. Okay. All right. That's it for me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, uh, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.